Well, the government will put up stronger laws by early next year to better protect you against harassment, both in the real world and online. Now, this will happen either in the form of new legislation or amendments to existing laws. Our government feedback unit REACH recently polled 1,000 Singaporeans. Now, 80% of them consider online harassment to be a serious issue and nearly 90% agree that those who harass others should be punished under the law. So to discuss the issue, I have with me in studio Jonathan Yuan. He's a commercial litigation lawyer at Raja and Tan. So Jonathan, thank you very much for coming in today. Thanks for having me. No problem. So looking at our current laws uh, that deal with harassment, they deal with specific areas, but they don't cover general conduct. For example, the Women's Charter. That's right. So you have things like the Women's Charter, which specifically... Uh, you know, governs uh, issues of family violence. And so there seems to be a gap in the law when, uh, for example, a husband could get a PPO against a, a, an abusive wife. But if the same thing happens between a boyfriend and a girlfriend, then uh, this remedy is not available to them. Uh, also in Singapore, we have a gap in the sense that uh, we don't have what is known in other jurisdictions as a restraining order. Okay. Uh, people have to go to court and specifically get a civil injunction. And, you know, the amount and cost that it takes to do that may be prohibitive for a lot of people. So we have the Miscellaneous Act as well, which is also actually very broad when it comes to harassment. So it seems that, you know, when it comes to law enforcement, it's a mishmash of different kinds of legislation, especially when it comes to harassment. So uh, in your view, this needs to change? Well, I think there's a general opinion and uh, there's a very clear sentiment from the public I think that we need to pool all these disparate uh, uh, rights that people ought to have against harass, uh, harassers uh, together under a standalone act. Having a standalone act also sends a clear message and signal to society that this is a behavior not to be condoned. Currently, uh, you know, one could try to go under common law or one could try to go under specific uh, statutes. But if you, for example, talk about harassment under the Money Lenders Act, then it's only specific to those instances that are covered by the Parent Act. Okay. It's not a standalone, uh, uh, it's not a standalone oh, harassment, act. harassment Act. Thank okay. you. Okay, so uh, I mean, if we were to look at cyber harassment specifically, how would that be handled now? I think this is one of the major problems. Cyber harassment is a huge problem now, especially I think for school children because of the cloak of anonymity that uh, allows people to hide behind monikers. They create fake Gmail accounts, Yahoo accounts, webmail accounts and they go out and they spam each other. And this is really difficult uh, to, to deal with. The key issue here is uh, the law now currently uh, does not protect or does not, uh, that does not make a criminal offence acts which uh, fall short of offences, but nonetheless, they still cause worry, distress and emotional trauma. So if I don't use abusive words and I don't threaten anyone, then, then I can't rely on the Miscellaneous Offences Act. But what if I call someone 50 times and keep hanging up each time? Right or someone keeps pleading with a, maybe a, a boyfriend calls his ex-girlfriend and keeps pleading to get back with her and he sends her 50 SMSs in the course of an hour uh, declaring his love, not to threaten her but to declare his love and begging her to take him back. Again, that's not covered. Or an employee threatening an employer, you know, all these instances are, are, are not covered. Okay, so um, Minister Shah Mugam has already said that we are behind the curve uh, compared to other jurisdictions in this area. So perhaps give us some examples of what's happening in the UK, the US. Japan. Well, in some other jurisdictions that Minister Shamugam spoke about, uh, clear, let's, let's take a look at the UK. They have the Protection from Harassment Act 1997. So that act is a standalone act and it, you know, it very broadly defines the principles of what constitutes harassment. Um, you know, and with, with, this, with this act, uh, the UK has been uh, able to rely on it. Now, in Singapore, we actually have a common law position as early as 2011 from the case of Malcolmson. Uh, but because of a recent judicial pronouncement in the AXA case, uh, the law is now a little bit unsettled as to whether or not the thought of harassment now actually exists in Singapore. And we are waiting for either new laws to be introduced to clarify that position or for the Court of Appeal to also clarify that position. So, Jonathan, one last question. When we see the new laws come out next year, what are you hoping to see? Well, I think uh, given that cyber harassment, uh, not just with school children, but with uh, the general population in, uh, at, at large, the large issue here is one of anonymity. And I think that if as long as people are allowed to hide behind uh, uh, fake Gmail accounts or you know webmail accounts, this type of harassment is going to go on. And my personal hope is that there will be some portion of the act that will compel or at least strongly encourage ISPs and website owners to be part of the process in protecting people from harassment. All right. Thank you very much. It was great speaking to you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for having me. And that was Jonathan from Raja and Tan with his views on stronger laws to better protect you against harassment. Uh, let's go for a short